Naomi Bates, who is the Songs of Adaptation Project Director and Associate Professor at Future Generations University. That is quite an introduction. Um, and Naomi is going to talk about bioacoustics and machine learning for avian species presence surveys. Uh, Naomi, the floor is yours. Thank you, Stephen. Um, yeah, Future Generations University, no one's ever heard of it. We're a small university based in the US with a, a global student body, and we focus on applied community development. And so the project that I've been working on, the Songs of Adaptation Project, um, is, oh, just a minute, I'm going to try to figure out how to use screen share here. Um, <laughs> the Songs of Adaptation Project is um, a global project uh, that is community-based. moment here. Uh, let me know if you can't see my screen for some reason. Uh, so we um, provide a framework to monitor ecosystems and biodiversity around the world. And we're trying to make this science accessible and locally relevant, especially in the face of climate change and vulnerable communities and vulnerable ecosystems around the world. So we partner with local stakeholders and have globally consistent data standards um, and analysis methodology. But again, we're providing a framework and the questions that we ask of the data are driven by local partners and local knowledge is incorporated. So that is interpreted in local context for those applications. So currently we have 22 monitoring sites in the US, Bolivia, Uganda, and Nepal. And we're using bioacoustics to try to understand biodiversity in our changing world. So why bioacoustics? Well, looking at very remote regions like this area in Nepal, the Makaluburu National Park coming off of Mount Makalu, the fifth highest peak in the world, uh, it's really difficult to monitor in these ecosystems. They're very, very remote, um, harsh conditions. But acoustic monitoring can allow us to continuously monitor large areas for avian um, community composition. And we also get mammals and uh, insects, basically anything that's making noise. I'm gonna focus here on birds. And why birds? Well, they're very well studied. Um, they can be sensitive to environmental changes, such as climate, uh, those from climate or anthropogenic changes. And because they can fly, it allows them to respond quickly um, and move. And they have high vocal activity. So when they make a lot of noise, it makes them good for bioacoustics. And with this bioacoustic data, we're developing a baseline to understand what's where now. And in the short term, we can identify, identify species of interest for ecosystem protection. But in the long term, then we can begin to assess how these species are responding to climate change. Big data is a necessary component of this project because these bioacoustic recorders are collecting about a terabyte of data per recorder per year. So we have over 50,000 hours of bioacoustic data collected. And so to manage this, we built Earth Hertz, which is a streaming interface at songsofadaptation.org data for this data to stream it without having to download it. And this allows us to have global collaboration. This is built on open source um, software. And within this interface, we also are using artificial intelligence and machine learning tools to analyze the big data and identify specific species. Talk a little bit more about that later, but this allows us to process thousands of hours of data in just minutes. So the process is we collect the data, we listen to some of it, um, and we can work with local experts to identify species. Then we cluster the data into similar looking data. Um, we label the species uh, in each uh, location. And we also have negative labels for the model, such as insects, winds, human activity. And then we train the models. So these are tensor, um, these are built with TensorFlow, uh, and this is widely used for image recognition. So we're, instead of working with the audio data, we're actually working with MEL spectrogram images using convolutional neural networks, and as I mentioned, MEL spectrograms. We've built this on Microsoft's cloud services, Azure, using Azure Data Lake, um, Azure uh, Data Science, virtual machines, and 
um, our, our um, programmer and data scientist has split this to work on 100 virtual machines using Databricks, which allows it to run much, much faster. So these machine learning models identify the probability of occurrence of species in the terabytes of data. So we feed in years of data and we can get out a time series of when a particular species is present and where. So these results can then be used to inform management decisions and address the, the needs of local stakeholders. So this open source tools um, were built on other open source bioacoustic programs and the user interface um, can also could also be used with other model architectures. Uh, we built it very uh, flexibly so that it could be potentially used by others. And so the vision is within reach to create tools for stakeholders to track climate change impacts for locally driven decision making and informed adaptation. So we really appreciate the support of Geobon and Microsoft AI for Earth and our partners around the world. Um, we also have teams, uh, folks doing field work, scientists, local scientists, um, community engagement specialists in Nepal, Bolivia, Uganda, and the USA. So thank you very much. Um, we'd love to have you join us on the, the platform, Earth Hurts, uh, at songsofadaptation.org slash data to listen to the data, label. Um, we'd love your feedback. Uh, and feel free to get in touch with me. Brilliant. That was uh, perfectly timed and um, really great. And it's, it's really nice to see all these um, projects coming through from people who have had the various um, grants come through from our program. So glad you're working with our Geobon colleagues. And um, yeah, the, the problem is we don't have enough time to do all these things to see all these there's, there's so much going on so thanks again and and now um i've also heard of um future generations university <laughs>